Well, I'm back to Test Tuesday. Today, we're going to do a little bit of follow-up about the tests that we did last week, all about the spiral fittings and the plasterboard fittings. And we're going to recalibrate my test rig and check that that's all in order. We'll chat about all of that in a minute. Hiya folks, welcome back and welcome back to Test Tuesday. I thought I'd do a bit of a different video today because we've not really talked that much about the actual test rig that I use and I will at some point get around to showing you how I made all of this and how it works and the Arduino side of things and all that. It's on me to-do list along with a billion other things but what I did want to show you is how I calibrate the rig and though all I do uh, I just use a set of weights and they're probably not the most accurate thing in the world to calibrate stuff with but I've basically got uh, just these the big ones on here are two kilogram weights and they seem to be pretty good for getting some fairly consistent calibration readings out of the thing the medium ones are one and a quarter kilo but I tend to just use the two kilo ones because not that good at maths. So I'll show you how I do that. Basically, these little two kilo weights, I just put in a plastic bag, which I'm assuming is of negligible weight, so I don't really need to take into account the weight of the plastic bag. And then all I do, get me weights. Ugh. We'll start with eight and we'll work down. I think that'll be as good as any. They're not gonna be like mega accurate. I mean, apart from anything else, I very much doubt these are exactly two kilos, but you know, it's gonna be close enough. Uh, we'll set that away measuring. Uh, oh, I probably shouldn't take into account the weight of the hook, hold on. So it's, it's zeroed like that. So that's eight kilos I've got in a minute. Very careful that the bag doesn't split. So we're pretty much 8.01. It's as near as damn it to eight. You can see these little, the little wiggles in the graph. That's from the bag swinging. Let me try and keep that still. There we go. I'll then take one out and get a measurement for six. I want to try and do it before the graph runs out. Get off. Coming out at 6.02, 6.01, 6.02. Close enough. As long as I'm in within, what, 0.1 of a kilo, I think that's pretty good. Uh, and do four kilos. It's fine. And then two kilos. Uh, and we're just within my personal tolerance there. Uh, 2.08. The thing is, temperature and all sorts of things can impact this so you know there can be a variance in temperature in a workshop and, and everything changes but that's pretty decent you know that's that's pretty close uh let me just stop that and save it and then i can i'll upload a copy of this graph on the patreon and for my patreon people if you want to have a look at this and you can and you can have it to play around with it uh file one of the main things that i like to check with this is that and the reason I do lots of different weights is that we want to check that, yes, okay, it's correct for eight and it's correct for two, but it's also correct for everything in between. We want to make sure that we've got linear kind of growth on the, the scale because there's nothing to say that, okay, it's logging two correctly and eight correctly, but actually it's doing it on some sort of logarithmic scale, in which case every other measurement would be meaningless. But as we've got a nice linear progression from two, four, six, and eight, I think we can safely say that that's fine. So while I'm at it, a little bit of an update on the whole spiral 
fixing thing. I think the vast majority of people who watched the video and commented on the video agreed with me that the spiral fixings are rubbish. And a few of you who have been using them for a long time have basically said, what are you going to do with them? Some really good ideas of what to do with dead spiral fixings. One particularly good idea that someone came up with was turning them into little Mordor castles and painting them. Someone else mentioned using them in door frames where the wood behind the hinges pretty much disappeared. You know, you get situations where no matter how big a screw you put in, the wood behind the hinge on a door, it's just gone. And really, really good idea for using these in a bigger hole in the wood, obviously a decent size hole in the wood, screw these in and then screw your hinge into these. If the wood has completely gone, I think that would probably work pretty well. So a couple of good uses for them, but as a plasterboard fixing, which is what they're designed for, uh, I still think they're absolutely useless. Interestingly, a couple of people did say, oh, well, I'm doing the test wrong and I should be doing a shear load test instead of an axial load test. I have covered off this on the channel before why all of the tests are axial load tests. The main reason is because we want to be able to compare the results between different fixings. And if I start changing the shear load for some fixings and axial load for other fixings, then we can't compare them anymore. The whole point of this is that it's a comparative test between different fixings. If I change the test every time, it's not a comparative test anymore. The other thing as well is that there's very, very few situations other than hanging pictures, and you're not gonna hang pictures on these, are you? There's very few situations where putting a load on these doesn't involve an axial force of some description. Because if you've got even, let's think, um, hmm, let me show you, on a shelf bracket, not that I would ever suggest, uh, how many things are gonna fall on my head? Uh, these Stay. So just to reiterate, I strongly recommend not fitting floating shelves onto plasterboard walls at all, because the plaster just can't take it if you put any sort of load on the shelf, unless you manage to hit studs. Anyway, if you do decide to put shelves up with horrible spiral fittings, or any fittings for that matter, there's always an element of an axial load. It's not a, sh a shear load is where all the load is going down the wall like that. An axial load is where the force is coming out of the wall. And some people seem to think that an axial load would only apply if you're hanging things from the ceiling. Well, that's not the case, because if you imagine with a shelf, what is inclined to happen with a shelf is that the bracket does that. And if the bracket does that, it's applying, okay, a bit of a shear load, but it's applying most of the force as an axial load, trying to pull, if you imagine, pulling the fitting straight out the wall in the radius of whatever from there to there is, or from there to the, the hole. So it's trying to pull it out in a circular axial path. It's not a shear load. Shear would be coming, doing that. And that applies to Loads of things, coat hooks. Uh, if you imagine, hold on, find a bit of wood. There's a bit of wood. Imagine you've got hooks on here and you've got a screw there and a screw there. Am I even in shot yet? And then imagine that you're putting this in the wall behind. With the hooks on here, it's gonna be inclined to make your piece of wood do that. And again, What's the force that's getting applied? It's an axial force trying to pull this out the wall like that. It's, there's a little bit of shear force trying to pull it down the wall, but most of the force, if you've got a hook sticking out of this uh, with a jacket on it or something, and the hook's attached to there, it's trying to make this bit of wood pull away from the wall at a radius starting from that corner up to where the fitting is. So it's absolutely an axial load. In uh, The only situations where it's not is where you've got maybe a picture hanging on it or something like that, because with a picture, 
nearly all of the force is going like straight down the wall because it's hanging directly on the screw and it's trying to pull it that way. Fair enough in that situation. But in the name of science, let's see how these perform in a shear load test then. So I set up the test to do the shear load test and guess what? They did, I can't remember what the ratings were that they got last time, they weren't very good. But they didn't do too badly. The metal one managed 27.56 kilos and the plastic one got 29.18 kilos. How did they compare to the little LDF plastic fitting? Wah wah, the little plastic LDF one got 48.74 kilos. And, same as before, didn't have a catastrophic failure, whereas the metal one ripped straight out the board, completely catastrophic failure, and the plastic one pretty much ripped straight out and then the chain basically came off because it was at such an angle, the fitting was unusable. Whereas the um, little LDF or GP fitting or whatever, still, Holding on for dear life, 48.74, peak load, remember. Someone else said, oh, well, it's still done much better than the rated figure on the packet. And it's like, yeah, because I'm measuring peak load. You never go by the peak load. You have to apply a safety factor. And the safety factor is normally minimum three. Some manufacturers use a safety factor of five. I've seen some using seven and 10 as a safety factor. So with a safety factor of three on 29 kilos, then for a shear load, you shouldn't be putting anything more than 10 kilos on. And that's for a directly perpendicular shear load, which in all honesty is crap. And um, yeah, the little LDF fitting still did better. So conclusively, in my opinion, spiral fittings, there is literally no need to use them. If you've used them successfully, well done. I advise you don't. And just while we're doing the follow-up as well, um, some folk were asking, okay, if you're not gonna use the spiral fittings, what would you use? Personally, I like those little gray plugs for lightweight stuff. They work really well, as I say, with a 10 gauge screw does the job for me it's up to you how you use them but that's the way I use them and they generally work absolutely great for heavier stuff I prefer the expanding metal anchors used with a setting tool and between the little LDF plugs and those that covers most scenarios anything beyond that there's exceptions there are some plasterboard fittings now that really spread the load over a much bigger area behind the plasterboard, I will be testing those at some point. Those will perform better, but generally, whether you're using these or like the butterfly toggles or snap toggles or anything like that, it's gonna be the plasterboard that's gonna fail and the plasterboard's gonna fail around the same figure, no matter whether, like grip it fixings and all that as well. Also, be careful when you're looking at the rated load values on fittings because some manufacturers quote sheer load that a fitting can take. Remember the axial load is generally your worst case scenario on a fixing. If you go by the axial load normally that's going to give you a good indication of what the fitting can handle. Sometimes it gets called a tensile load as well and also always make sure that whatever 
figure they are telling you the fitting can handle, make sure that includes the safety factor. If it doesn't include the safety factor, it's almost completely meaningless. Some other plugs I will be testing in due course. Uh, the Fisher Duo power ones. I don't think in plasterboard they're going to do any better than the LDFs, personally, but we'll see. And these ones look really interesting. And these are the Fisher Duo Tech fittings. These look amazing. They're kind of your ultimate cross between a normal plug and a plasterboard plug that can use, be used in loads of different scenarios. So I will be testing those very soon. The only thing that kind of slightly puts me off saying that the Duo Tech is the ultimate fixing of all time, and we'll see once we've done the proper tests on it, but I don't think they're going to get any better results than the expanding metal fixings because they don't, it doesn't spread the load any further than the legs on uh, the expanding metal fixing. So I can't see it getting a hugely different load rating, but we'll find out when I test them, won't we? stop jumping to conclusions but they are a very clever versatile fixing by the looks of it i'll include a link in the description below to the fisher duo tech clever stuff that's it for today really just a bit of an update follow-up and all that sort of thing pop in the comments below if you've got any questions or fittings that you'd like me to test or whatever if you want to send me fittings to test the po box address is in the about section on the channel uh, I can't guarantee that I'll put them through the paces, but if I've got time, I will. Leave it at that for now. No, you hang up first. Yeah, you hang up first. Okay, bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Bye.